15 and then we get a photo. Yep. Oh. In the dark of the night in Bali, we go hunting for a highly venomous creature that I've always wanted to see. When it's not in the ocean, it makes its home in these rocks. Suddenly I spot one on the move and dive down to grab its tail. My mate Argus is quick to come help me out. Yeah, he's coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. You got him? Yeah. Okay, that's tight. These guys have a reputation for never biting. However, we're in an area where the hospitals are not to Western standards and anti-venom can be hard to come by. This is why I start off handling it with a hook. Better to be safe than sorry. One of the most dangerous times working with snakes is when you're working with a new species you're not familiar with. This guy's really chilled though. It's got ticks. Pink? Many ticks on its tail. Yeah, the tail's been injured. In a river nearby, we find a file snake that at first appears to have a bit of a skin condition. Oh no. What is it? It's like fungus or something. They get this uh, in captivity. We try them and they always end up with this loose skin and it starts to peel off and get scabby. It's healthy enough. It's horrible. Healthy but it's skin. Yeah, that's just, well that's just the fact that it's just, no, this, is, this isn't fungus, this is just, just camouflage. Yeah. It isn't got, isn't got skin fungus. Mm. There's nothing on it because they get it on their ventral scales. It's just filthy. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with the snake. It's weird. Okay, I need a photo of you don't one. know what kind of fish it is. No. Well, this is definitely granulatus. Granulatus, yeah, okay, oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, but we find him pink. With okay. Well, now you can find him covered in algae. Yeah. So it's his actual skin that's all. No, it's just um, grown out. No, it's just grown, just, just uh, got a covering of algae going all over. They're pretty slow moving. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's good camouflage. Yeah. Um, I think I've seen five snakes like that before. I never have, but I've only ever seen a green artist I've ever seen been pretty clean at home in Cairns. Lucky for us, we've got a couple of reptile experts with us. Greg and Michael, who are from North what Queensland. Is, what's this water like? Is it brackish? Yeah. Is it tidal? Yeah. Yeah, certainly not Javanicus, because he'd have a big yellow ventral stripe. He'd have a big ventral stripe. Well, this is... But the ones at home have got regular bands, haven't they, Michael? 
Yeah, oh, not always. Tra- not always, no, I know. Tra- tra- transverse just bandit, just, just plain, plain colour? brown, yeah. Okay. Well, I've never seen them a transverse bandit. I've never seen anything like that. No, no, no. <laughs> Get a shot. That would be just about the most best camouflaged snake I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> After a few quick photos, it is released back into the river. So Megan's got her first rescue ever. Tell us about what you've rescued. Um, I was running on the beach and I saw this little fellow. I cut my run short to bring Steve a present. He likes it. Best present you've ever got. <laughs> this is the other species of sea crate, the large scaled or blue sea crate. It is not very common on Bali. However, this injured one was found washed up on Legian Beach, a very popular tourist beach here. Even though it's young, this sea crate has a lot of venom in that tiny head, and it's dangerous neurotoxic venom. Like sea snakes, they have a narrow adapted tail formed to shape a paddle and that helps them swim. Unlike sea snakes, they come up on land and lay eggs and don't give live birth. So my little sea crate is a bit wriggly now. Oh, we're waiting for Steve because he's pooping. Totally got the shits. Good old barley belly. <laughs> um, so we've got a little crate here, um, and we're gonna pop him in there, um, and then give him to Bali Reptile Rescue Centre. Megan's first snake rescue ever, and boy am I proud. <laughs>